Bedford CA. A pre-war Austin here. No, oh, it's a it's a Nova. Oh right, so these are the standard eight cadet yep. badges. Yeah. Look at this here, a Ford 100E Anglia convertible. Well morning folks, and today we're at Bodrithen Hall. This is in the North Wales Classic Car Show. We've come in the MX-5 because it's a little bit further. So we thought, well we've not been to this show before, so we'll come and have a look and see what classic cars, old motorbikes and such like turn up for this one. There's a lovely avenue as you pull in. It's a bit of a breezy day, so apologies if there's a bit of wind noise. This. Is it? Oh, yeah, there's a little pre-war car, a little Austin or something coming in. I'm not quite sure, but let's go and have a look and see what cars turn up today. Herald Convertible. Mark 2 Jaguar, 1964. What engine have we got here? 2.4, 3.4 or 3.8? I'm not sure from here. 3.4. Yes, your young, healthy eyes. So we'll have a proper walk around the parked up cars later, but for now we'll just record them as they arrive. Great little Austin 7 there, parked up, probably just waiting for his friends so they can all park up together. We've got a TR8, TR7 V8, most likely. MG RV8. Sounds quite fruity. Mighty American car here now. Cadillac. Is it a caddy, is it? Yeah. Silent. What a fantastic tree lined approach to Bodrith and Hall here in North Wales. RS Turbo. Burbling up the drive, we've got a Pontiac here for the 1970s. Bedford CA. Wowzers, that's a nice Citroen DS. Nice, isn't it? There's something you don't see all that often a Toyota Crown. Two Cortinas now, we've got a full Cortina Mark V there and catching up rapidly, a really nice Mark III. A pre-war Austin here. That's what we like. Triumph Stag heading in now, it's 3 litre V8 burbling away to itself as it gently comes up the driveway here.
behind that a gigantic American car what is it I need to zoom out for this one any ideas Le Baron so is that Chrysler got a Toyota Land Cruiser these are really cool I like these a lot We've seen this many times at the Chumley Castle Classic Car Show, but that, sadly that one no longer go, takes place, so uh, yeah, I've not seen that for quite a while. There's a really nice Reliant, the SE4 Coupe. Really like those. The Volvo 144 now, quite an early one with the tin front. They changed the front on later examples, but they're really nice. Marcos and a Mustang. Seven hundred series Volvo Estate, a seven forty GL. Brace of Audis. First Morris Minor of the day, really nice traveller. One of the reasons for coming to this particular classic car show is hopefully to see some cars we haven't seen before and includes this wonderful Mark 1 Ford Escort. What a groovy old Plymouth. Another MX-5 Mark 1. There's a strong contingent of Triumph TR6s here today. That sounds wonderful. We've got a gaggle of fruity sounding kit cars coming in now, headed up by this V8 Cobra. Many, many caterums, I think. I don't think we've seen this uh, Dolomite before either. All manner of older cars are queuing up to get in now. There's an MGTF. And another one on the list of cars that we haven't seen before is this really smart four door Ford Escort. Maestro, I think we've seen before somewhere, probably Crew Heritage, we've seen these two. Following that, an MGB GT. Smart, isn't it? Ideal starter classics for anyone thinking of getting into owning a classic car. MGB and the Morris Mine are both really well supported cars, loads of spares and advice around. So if you're thinking of taking the plunge and buying a classic car for the first time, you could do a lot worse than buy one of these. Volvo 850. Who remembers the touring cars, the BTCC Volvo 850 estates back in the mid 1990s? It's 
really nice to see so many cars we just haven't seen before at the classic car shows that we've been to this year or in previous years. A wonderful Stingray here. Well, the show field is beginning to fill up with old cars now. Uh, fingers crossed they'll keep pouring in for a good while yet. Lovely V8 burble there, three and a half litre V8 in the Rover SD1. And the Jaguar XJ40s wafting in. Grey space and space. Another of Blackpool's finest, they're a TVR Cerber, I think. S type. Mark II Astra GTE. You don't see those too often, and that's followed by a Nova. That's a nice one. Some more American subtlety here, we've got a Stingray. It's a really good turnout of American cars here today. Nice colour. There's another new one to us, a Simca, complete with yellow French headlamps still. What a beauty that is. Right hand drive though. Yeah, it is right hand drive, isn't it? Well spotted. So what's that, 1972 or 73? Behind that, we've got a Mini Clubman. And one of the MGZTs, not quite sure what, which one. Behind that, a TVR, the Mini just pulling over. Reliant Sabre. That was the last gasp of the Scimitar SS1 as far as I remember. BMW 2002 right hand drive. It's a 1502. That's quite a rarity. Occasionally you see 1602s but I don't remember the last time I saw a 1502. That's really nice to see that out here today. TR3A Mark 1 Fiesta There's that Mini No, oh, it's, it's a Nova I remember having a ride in one of those ones Yeah, this is a VW based kit car, the Nova. We've got a Bentley Moore sound behind that, a Datsun, is that a 120Y? Might be. Yes, of that's a 120Y P reg. I remember when those things were everywhere, usually in that turquoise colour as well. One of the last of the line MGB LEs. A rare Chevette saloon, a four door saloon. I think Vauxhall is the featured mark here today, so I'm hoping to see lots of classic Vauxhalls here. 968.
pair of classic Fords burbling in now. Mark 1 Cortina, four door GT, I think. An XR3 or an XR3i. Which one? XR3i. So that was a fuel injected car. Originally, it was just the XR3 with a carburetor on it. But they soon perked it up a bit with the addition of fuel injection. Last time we saw this really unusual coloured TR2 was at the Alton Park Gold Cup, if I remember right. What a beauty that is. It's one of very few in that colour, I believe. E30 Cabriolet. MGR V8. TR4, 1964. Really smart example of the Maestro coming in now. Presumably that'll park up with the other Maestros that we saw driving a little bit earlier. Wow, a little two-door Austin E30. That's really nice, that is. What a beauty. And a 911. I think your boot is open at the front. There's a rarity, a Zagato body Lancia Fulvia, the Fulvia Zagato. Again, classic car I've not seen before, so it's well worth the trek over here to North Wales for this particular classic car show. I think these 5 Series, the E39, are quite a handsome looking car. Behind that, the Suzuki Cappuccino. Lots of classic cars still rolling in. We've got a Morgan here, bright red Morgan. Behind that, an Opel Manta. I believe a Spitfire has been spotted. Behind the Opel Manta exclusive, we've got this 3 Series BMW. This is an E21 era BMW 3 Series Alpina modified based on the 323i, the six-cylinder car. I think we saw this one last at Western Park. Yeah, so that's the E21 series. Six-cylinder cars had the four headlamps, if I remember right. Tucked away down there, we've got a bright red Welsh registered CA, Welsh registered early track Spitfire. Now I think it's a Mark II. The Mark I and the Mark II Spitfire had the low set front bumper, but I've got a feeling the Mark I had a lower door handle. So I think this is technically a Spitfire 4 Mark II. Yep, definitely a Spitfire 4 Mark II. That one dates to 1966. That's a really lovely car. Nice to see one on the standard steel wheels not the usual mini lights and things that get bolted on but that's a really lovely car just a sea of gray and black and dreary modern cars coming in now but amongst them is this wonderful mercedes sl now we've commented on this one before, it's an export or an American specification car. Still got the huge bumpers, the chrome wheels, I don't remember ever seeing those on a British market SL. This is the 107 series, the R107. But huge bumpers, as befits the American market of the 1970s and into the 1980s. We didn't do much for the lines, but it's really interesting to see one in that particular spec here in the UK. And it's also got a high level brake light, which I'm guessing is probably original to it as well. Two point 
Following a Mark II MX-5 is a really nice Datsun, one of the early Z cars, either 240Z or maybe 260Z. A real gaggle of fast forwards coming in now. Capri. Great little Nissan S cargo coming in. Lovely old Veloset pulling in there. Over in the uh, pre 1960s area, we've got some lovely cars, and heading up the row is this Standard 8. And not only is it a Standard 8, it's a Standard 8 that's for sale. So if you want to join our merry band of Standard 8 owners, there you go. But this is quite an unusual car because it's badged up as a Standard Cadet. Now that was an export uh, name that they gave to some of these cars for different uh, markets, possibly Australia, maybe America, and North, you know, North America, Canada and so on. So quite what the history of this particular car is. We're not quite sure. I had a word with the owner before, but he's not quite sure either. But this one is subtly earlier to our Standard 8 back at home. This one obviously has the sliding windows, sliding door glasses, not just in the front, but also in the back. The very early, the very first Standard 8s didn't even have chrome hubcaps. But you can tell also they've got the, the twist down door handles that go like that, whereas ours has got the the push button so there were lots of subtle differences throughout the production run of the standard eight also it has pop-up tra traffic aces the semaphore indicators this one has been added has actually got added flashing indicators but again this is a, a mark of an early standard eight ours doesn't have any of this so the doors just come straight down so if you're buying doors for your standard eight make sure you get the right ones because not all eight doors are the same like yeah. i say this has got the sliding door glasses as well it was very much a back to basics car this was, very few frills. Got a quick peek under the bonnet, that's the 803cc version of what was known as the SC engine. It grew to 948 and 1147 with the Triumph Heralds and Spitfires and then 1296 and up to 1500 for the last of the Spitfires and the rubber bumper MG. So that engine was not only very flexible but it was produced for many, many years. Well, that's a really nice car, I do like that. Quite exciting when we spot a standard eight or a ten. Oh, I see, right. Oh, right. So these are the standard eight cadet badges that the export cars would have had on the front wings but we don't quite know whether this one's actually been abroad or someone's put the badges on or if it's oh right yeah yeah look at this here a ford 100e anglia convertible very rare 1172 semi-automatic ford newton drive that's similar to the stand drive setup that i used to have on my standard 10 it's returned to the Ford dealers for leather seats and they're converted to a convertible by Abbott's, they think. Abbott's did the estate car conversions of the Zephyrs and the consoles and so on at the same sort of time. What a great history that is. No. <laughs> it's a super rare car. I think I saw this one at the NEC a while back. You don't see too many of these. There's probably only a couple or so left. This is the 100E version of the Anglia, uh, the Anglia name 
lasted for many, many years across different, various different models of car, if you like. So it's always been, pretty much always been a convertible As far one. as we know, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Well. Oh, is this to do with a Newton drive then? The is this? Yes. Yeah. So is that like a sort of a Vacuum. centrifugal sort of clutch type thing on it? Uh, no, it's actually oh. a standard clutch. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, because I was thinking it might be like, because I used to have a standard ten with a stand drive transmission. Yeah, it's very similar. It's like a two pedal sort of thing. This is two pedals. Yeah, it must be the very yeah. similar sort of setup, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Takes some getting used to. <laughs> so like in traffic, you just brake and accelerate, brake and, and accelerate. There's no yeah. sort of clutch pedal or anything like that, no, is there? No, no. Well, there's no. Uh, the gear knob is the actuator. Yes, yes, it's on the gate. Yeah, it's the yeah, same, exactly yeah, the same as I yeah. understand it. Yeah, and it all still works properly. Then it works very well. Does it? Yeah, you can't <laughs> rush the gear changes. No, it will grind. But yeah, uh, they all do that anyway. You, you can, it's like an automatic. You just sit at the lights in first gear. It won't creep. No, no, they're great. Aren't yeah, they? yeah, yeah. You just accelerate and it just yeah, it just brilliant. spins up and sort of engages, doesn't yeah. it? No, it's a great. There can't be many hundred of these running with that now. I couldn't tell you. No, uh, I no. did one C about eight nine years ago. Uh, a Prefect 100E hmm. with a thousand miles on it, and that was manumatic. Was that it? was for sale in Rochdale, was a black one. <laughs> wow. I lived in Oldham at the time. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, wow. This awesome. is mine actually, it belongs to Tony. Right, right. Just admiring, just admiring the 100E. Oh, yeah. I'm just sort of yeah. talking about the uh, the gear change arrangement on it, because yeah. I used to have a standard 10 with a stand drive where you operated a clutch on the gear lever yeah. and you just had the two pedals. Yeah. So is this the same, this it's is the same setup? Similar idea, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, wow. wow, that's such a rare car, that now, isn't it? Yeah. And you think it may have been done by Abbott's the convertible conversion? Well, I've been conversing with the block who does the archives at Abbott's, and he's not sure. Mm, right. Well, it's certainly not. been done properly, hasn't it? It's, oh yeah. yeah you I mean, can see it's that. Got, it's got wind-up windows in the back and everything. Well, yes. <laughs> Yeah. The proper hood, isn't it? Because uh, yeah, that's, that's usually the giveaway of like a homemade conversion. It did have a glass window in that's a new top. Did it? it? Did have a glass window. Oh right, got it. Yeah. When it went down, it used to stick yeah. out in people's oh, necks and decide in the back. <laughs> so, that's but great that is. The people who won this mm. originally, there was just two of them. Oh yeah. That's why I say it spent six months, six or seven yeah. months in Athens. Has this been at the NEC before yeah, now? Yeah, really I'm sure I've seen it there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a really interesting little 100E, that one. Let's carry on along here. We've still got a few more old cars to look at. The Austin 7 here, 1933, little box saloon. Yeah. The older cars are getting a lot of interest. So that's Sunday the 16th of October. Full details of all the events are on the website. And if you're exhibiting, you can book. There's the mighty engine, 747cc of it. With the admission on the day, uh, ten pounds for adults and just four pounds for. Children. Next to the seven, we've got another classic Austin, slightly new, but only there's only two years between them. This is 1933, this is 1934, and this is an Austin 10 Clifton, a little two-seat Tourer with the uh, the dicky seats in the back or the mother-in-law seat, as they were sometimes called. We saw this one driving in before, but this is a really sweet little car, and this was a contemporary of the the Austin 10 for Litchfield. And then I think the year or so after this, it was the Cambridge came out and they had the solid disc wheels, but these are still on spokes in 1935. Well, Austin 7's just driving off somewhere. I think he might be going into the arena or something. But yeah, what a great little car that is. A bit more room in these than the Austin 7, so arguably a little bit more practical. There's the MGTF we saw driving in before. The Bentley and Mulsanne has somehow ended up in a pre-60s parking area, but it seems to be fairly fluid, I think. And here is that, it's that four-door booted Chevette saloon. That's quite a rare sight now. Like I say, Vauxhall, I think, is a feature mark today, but there aren't a huge array of Vauxhalls here, but no, there are some interesting ones. Very lovely indeed. Gentlemen all decked out and uh, yeah. most of, mostly seems to be hatchbacks that survive yeah, of the few chevettes that you do now. see they usually seem to be hatchbacks so seeing the so booted saloon this is a chevette l is actually quite unusual do you like that this is a, the chevette this is a chevette no the, the, the cavalier mark one has got bigger lamps than that yeah, it's just the booted version of the yeah. Chevette. And there's that A30, Austin A30. Get off. It's the AS4 type Austin A30. 
the earlier, the very first Austin A30s had a slightly smaller grille. These would have been chromed originally, and they had a little winged badge on there. And the other identifier for the very first Austin A30s, that included, they had a circular speedometer. This you can just about see as this slightly more sort of oval-ish uh, speedo in there, same as the A40 Mark I. And on this era of A30, the fuel filler is on the back panel. On the very first A30s, the AS3 type, they're on the back wing about there. So those are just some of the differentiators between... Sorry? Yeah, on the two doors, yeah. So those are just some of the differentiators between the early A30s and the later A30s. And then, of course, you had the A35, which was a different car altogether with a bigger back window, different gutters and a painted grille at the front. This has the 803cc version of the A-series engine. That was the same throughout all A30 production. And the A35 had the 948cc version of the same engine. We've got a phase two standard Vanguard pulling in. We're going to get flattened, I think, if you don't know who's going to park. Saw a phase one at Molpus last weekend. A really nice phase one. The beetle back and the rear wheel spat. So this is the phase two version. So let's see what we've got here then. So it's a four-door Cortina. But it, it's, got a, it's got a Lotus badge on the front. But back in the day, Ford um, and Lotus, they only produced two-door versions, so this is obviously a conversion. What's going on under here? Yeah, it's got a ZTEC Ford engine. Yeah, they sound quite fruity, don't they? Yeah, they sound quite nice. It's a really nicely turned out car, that. Mm. No, at least it's a Ford, isn't it? This is a Ford engine, isn't it? Yeah, but 1965. Yeah, it's a smart. There's that Mini. One of the limited edition Minis, I assume. But which one is it? A Sprite or something like that? It's a Mini Mayfair. Quite a late Mini Mayfair. That was a name that was used for years on some of the limited edition classic Minis, if you like. There's the uh, Bravo limited edition Mark 1 Fiesta. Project Bobcat was the name of these when they were being developed internally by Ford. That was the uh, project name. And there's that MGB GT, the red GT. Yeah, quite chunky tyres. And then the Ross style wheels. Yep. There's that green Morris Traveller that came in. One of several TR6s. There's the fuel injected 2.5 litre engine. It's beautiful dark blue. There's that Volvo 144. Oh, that's nice. Where do we see this? Smallwood? Well, Smallwood, isn't it? Oh, if you've not seen the Smallwood video, please check that out. But this is the the early fronted version of the Volvo 144, the 140 series replaced the Amazons, although I think they were produced side by side for quite a while, for a few years. But yeah, this is the early 140 series, the 144 is the four door, and other markets had the 142, which is the two door saloon. I remember these well, Dad had a later one of these when I was a kid. And there's that glorious 144 and a bright yellow TR6 and it's starting to rain. We're in Wales. Who would have thought it might rain? But this one, is a, this is a really smart little Bedford CA. It's a Mark III with a deeper single front screen. The Herald 1360 convertible. Going to have to put the roof up soon if it stays like this because there's a few spits and spots. Really nice picnic set in there. From 1955, one of three. Very bonny little car that is, nice colour. Yeah, it's just started to a little bit. <laughs> Series 2 Land Rover. It says TR4A, 1966. Bit of information there. So this one went to America originally. Story yeah. there with the it's his beauty, isn't it? Unusual seats. So it's got the Surrey roof with a lift out panel. So it's going to have to. Yeah, I think we're going to have to go and grab that panel pretty quickly. I'm going to mark two Cortina. I'll have to scoot round a bit now because this rain is starting to settle in. We don't want that. So there's that TR2. The V8, MGR V8. What was it? The TR4, 1964. Got a stag driving in there, you can just hear a burble of the stag. 
This is one we've seen at Alton Park. It's the best one I've ever seen. What do we have here? Really nice example as well. Again, these Surrey roofs are very popular. So the TR4A, that the independent rear end, hence the IRS. Independent rear suspension, so you had the beam axle on the TR4, and the TR4A had the independent rear end. Yeah, it's just nice in there, isn't it? The dashboards are just so good. There's that Phase 2 Vanguard that we saw pulling in a few minutes ago, and um, just like that uh, little Standard 8 we saw before, it's also for sale. The Y-Type is like that YB, isn't it? The, like that first YB off the production line we see at Mulpus and places like that. So this is 4250, Series 2, or Phase 2 rather, Vanguard. So a quick look round the back, because that's where the main differences are visually. So yeah, the Phase 1 and the Phase 1A obviously has the Beetle back styling and the spats over the rear wheels there. And they updated it a little bit for the Phase 2. Still a very handsome looking car, shades of Humber I always think, with a rear view of that, a bit like the Humber Hawk. Yeah, it's nice isn't it? I like the badge, I really like the badges on these. Yeah, it is, it's got loads of stuff for sale. I think the Vanguard name came from HMS Vanguard, I think that was the inspiration for it. Yeah, so this was the big brother to the Standard 8 and the Standard 10. Quite a rare survivor. Other things for sale as well. So let's see what old cars we've got over here. This RS2000 and the other escorts we saw driving in before. A couple of Mark II escorts over there. Loggy Traveller. Volvo C70. So the V70, we had the estate version of that. That's the coupe. Here's that Reliant. Unfortunately, the rain seems to have eased off. Great looking car, aren't they? Fiberglass. Yeah, fiberglass bodied. Yeah. But they're a handsome machine. Of course, the later SE5 was more of a sort of a shooting brake, if you like, but this is a proper little three box sort of coupe. Well, I think it's just eased off now. Yeah. It's nice, that isn't it? 2.5. Huh? <laughs> I went to this one because I was just looking at the stickers on the arch oh, and yeah. it is actually this one. <laughs> Great job. And here's that mighty Toyota Crown Coupe. I mean Toyota Crowns are super duper rare at the best of times and, but the estates and the coupes are really thin on the ground now in this country. N red to so early 1970s. Toyota Crown Coupe first registered December 1974. There we go, bit of blurb there. According to that brochure copy over there, it's a Toyota Crown 2600 hardtop. It wasn't a coupe, although well, it was, but that's not what they were called. Toyo Glide automatic transmission. Wow, what a thing that is. Incredible. I think I saw this at the Chumley Castle Classic Car Show several years ago along with this Land Cruiser. A stag on Mini Light replicas. Very smart in dark blue. And here's that Simca. What a great car that is. Again, something we've never seen before. Simca 1100 GLS. What did I just say about the rain? Anyway, let's carry on regardless. Here's that lovely old Simca from the back. Does anyone watching this remember these Simcas? Did they own one? Did you own one of these? Uh, the Silver Shadow 2, you can tell the 2s by the, uh, the chunkier bumpers compared to these Shadow 1s. TR6, I'm getting wet. Triumph Stag, roof up, very wise. Citroen DS, beautiful car. Beautiful car, iffy weather. Oh, there's, <laughs> oh, there's some cars with roofs down, are there? 
you know, you need to get those roofs up. Most of them are up. A few people are under the tree, so they might be safe. Well, let's plough on. Here's that sort of Fulvia Zagato. Such a bonny little car that is. Mark 1 Escort Mexico. Would it be front wheel drive? Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. are. There's yeah. that like Datsun 120Y. God, these used to be everywhere. There was the 140J, which was a little bit larger. I remember those well. I think somewhere on the channel there's a brochure review of a, a Datsun brochure of this kind of era so check that out if you like your classic Japanese cars. I think we're going to head back to the car and just have a sit down out of the rain for a few minutes. I don't think it's going to last very long. It's only a passing shower but I don't really want to get too wet. We're parked up in the sports car section. It's an RV8 with its bonnet up. TR7 V8. There's a tribute to the DB4 GT, is it? Zagato. Oh, the, the GT Zagato. Right, let's get inside. Still a little bit soggy out there. Mitsubishi Pajero Jr. It's a new one on me. MGB GT. Really smart example of maroon. Tinted glass. Did they all have tinted glass? I'm sure someone watching this will know. It certainly looks good on that very green tint. There's that Dolomite. This rain just keeps coming and going. Right. Let's have a look at that 240Z. Or 260Z or 280Z? Which one? It is a 240Z. One of the best looking Japanese sports cars, I think, bar none. Big straight six cylinder engine under the bonnet of these. Really a very, very good looking car. It's that Mini Club and we saw this one driving in before behind the 240Z. Over here in slightly rainy North Wales, but you know, that's what you get. Right, 911, the bonnet's now closed, or the boot rather. And then the bonnet view of this Mexico. Yeah, and the cars are here are loosely grouped by age, so this is the 1980s section. We've got an XR3i, which is based on the Mark III Ford Escort. It's a really clean car. There's that LE version of the MGB Roadster. One of the very last on the W. There's a Maestro Corner. The Rover 75. Got a Nova GSI. It's a really rare sight now. Especially as clean as that. Beauty. Mark II Astra GT we saw driving in. The Audi gathering over here. Is this an 850 saloon, I think? A Capri on the end of the row. B Reg 1984, nice metal number plates. You like those? For sale, 13 and a half. There you go. Bit of info in the screen. Slightly modified VW pickup here. Oh, VW Caddy pickup. <laughs> There's that Manta GTE, the coupe. Sometimes you see the fastbacks and sometimes you see these, the coupes. It's a very neat car. Not many good ones of these left. An 
not one, but two. I only saw one of these driving in, I think. Yeah, a rare sight indeed. Nice old dealer supplied number plates on the front. Right, let's carry on and see what others are over there. The old, the newer cars are over there, so we'll just have a quick scoot around and see what we can see. I'll well, have a quick whiz around here. We've got a Cavalier. One time they were everywhere, but now it's not, not so much. A Rover. A Rover 100. There's that Volvo 850 Estate. Jaguar XG40 on an h dredge. 2.9 or 3.6 when they were first brought out. What's this one? Later 4 litres. This is a four litre. I think this was the last of the big Jaguar saloons that Sir William Lyons had some input into. Um, yeah. It's not often you see a, a good unrusty one of those now. So this is the E30 3 Series, this is the model that replaced the E21, we saw the Alpina E21 driving in before, so this is what took over the E30, this one. Ponto Cabriolet, and here in the modern classic section I suppose, Volvo 240. Really solid old girls they are. Bentley X-Type Jaguar. There's that Nissan S-Cargo. And the bonkers looking thing there. The Rover 306 I think. There's that little Suzuki Cappuccino. In Japan, they're encouraged to run very, very small cars, hence these little designs and the Daihatsu Kopen. There was another one on the Honda Beat, and this was Suzuki's offering, the Cappuccino. Right, let's go back over to the other side. Nice comparison between Mark II and Mark I MX-5. Mark I, of course, has the pop-up headlamps. The Mark II did away with that. Probably a safety thing, I would have thought. Otherwise, pretty similar, I think. Next to that, the MGB Roadster. Rubber bumper car. That's been on there a little while. Ooh, looks like a nice, tidy car. Stripey seats. T Reg car, same year as ours, I think. This is the Avanti, this was like a later tribute to the original Lotus Elan. Over here in the American corner, we've got this mighty Cadillac. We saw this one driving in, but let's have a quick closer look. HT4100 digital fuel injection signature series. Aerodynamics weren't really a thing of this era of American car. certainly see the link back to the sort of Cadillacs of the early 1960s, very, very similar shape. This was just like an evolution really. This was the Fleetwood Brougham, I think they call that. I think that's how you say it anyway. Yeah, vinyl padded roof, all very luxurious in the American way.
There's our 79 Pontiac Trans Am. Perfect choice for the Cheyenne retiring motorist. What a machine, that's it. So a quick peek in through the window, which helpfully is open. Those in-car phones, look at that car phone, Motorola. That's cutting edge tech, back in the 1980s. Got a graphic equaliser there for the stereo as well. I remember having one of those in my A40 for refined tunes. That's an incredible car, look at the trim, in such good condition. Quite an amazing car, isn't it? A couple of beauties here. Mighty Plymouth Fury, Ontario. So it's a Canadian, Canadian car. I like to see these original wheel discs. Mighty, mighty machine. <laughs> no, I think it can stay where it is, I think. Yeah. Get through a bit of Simonized polish with this one. Look at the size of it. Next to that, a gorgeous Stingray. That's a beautiful car, that is. Now that is a stunning car. American cars aren't for everyone, but I think most people agree this is a really eye-catching car. Hmm? Oh. What's this? Now we saw this driving before, we thought it might be a Chrysler. Looks like a really original car, original paint. Imperial. Le Baron. I'm sure that makes it a Chrysler, doesn't it? Yeah, I've got On the end of the row here, we've got a Chrysler, I think. Is it a Chrysler? Yes, Chrysler. There we go. They're pretty bonkers, aren't they? Look at all that buttoned upholstery. This is the Fifth Avenue edition. Y wheel style trims, and vinyl roof, a part vinyl roof. If you've seen some of the crew heritage meets, you'll remember seeing this Transport GT. All right, let's have a quick scoot around the rest of the American cars area. Another Stingray, another beautiful one, unusual colour as well. A bright red one here. Look at those wheels. <laughs> And then many, many more modern cars. I can't miss this BMW car club, it's the biggest car club here, I think, today. Let's have a quick look around. So we've got an 8 series here. Is this an 8? Which one's this one? 840, so that's the V8. There was the 840, the V8, and the 850 was the V12. The E39 and M5. Compact version of the E36 3 Series, little hatchback version. These are quite popular with the auto test guys because they've got the same rear suspension layout as the earlier E30, which apparently handles a bit better. Mm, Z4, 840 Ci. Yeah. 
Here's that 1502. Such a rare car that is. So this is a forerunner of the 3 Series. Back in the day, they maxed and flaps. It's got mud flaps on it as well. And uh, so it's a standard spec of the engine as well. It's a really nice, clean car, that is. What was the spec on those? Mm. You got any idea? Huge windows from, from an era when cars had really deep windows and you could see out of them so well. Easy to drive, easy to park. You didn't need, I don't know, but you didn't need parking sensors in order to park it. You could just look out of the window. All sorts here on the BMW Car Club. E46 325i, really nice. And the Bauer, we've talked about these a little bit before, the Bauer converted BMW 3 Series convertibles. So this was... So there's the badge. I don't know, but this was, I think they introduced these before BMW did their own convertible versions of the E30. The E30, the early E30s had slightly different backlights compared to the later cars. So this is an early ish one. Over here is that E21, the Alpina 323i. The, the Alpina C1 2.3. That is very nice. That's a super cool car, that. The Alpina cars always have these very distinctive wheels on them. What was your favourite of the last cars? They still do. They still have that. Do they still use that style of wheel, do they? Yeah. Any particular reason why you like that Cosworth? And these are the Alpina stripes as well down the side. Very distinctive, 3 Series and 5 Series. You don't see too many of them, but every now and again one will pop up. more forks over here and this is a twin cam wow look at that such a rare it's a bit of a cue car that is i mean obviously the little quarter bumpers and the wider wheels suggest one of the more sort of performance oriented mark one escorts but this is a, the, the fabled twin cam it's a beautiful little car that is a real sleeper That's a cracking little car, lovely colour, looks in great condition. Just look down the side, that's usually the giveaway. If a car's good, it looks good down the side. And this one looks fantastic. There's the all important badge. Many, many gauges. That's really, really nice. I like these little racing mirrors. Here's a lovely Jaguar Mark II when we look at the badge. Definitely a 3.4. Really nice car, Welsh registered, 1964. Bit of build details in the window here. Prepared for Bewley Garage Limited, Mark II 3.4 litre saloon, right hand drive, 27th of August 1964. The original distributor, Toza Kemsley and Milbourne of South Africa. The original dealer, Rob Motors, Cape Town, South Africa. Knockdown car, assembled, painted and trimmed in South Africa. That's interesting. That's a bit different, isn't it? South Africa was sent over as a kit and assembled over as... So is it a handful. Originally sold in Cape Town. It's been around a bit, hasn't it? Power. Good handling. Lovely car, that is. Beautiful car. It can handle, but it is a handful. You know, power. On it, it? Oh, so sort of with your low profile profile tyres, it's uh, a bit more. It's like no power steering, so it's, it's very bumpy. <laughs> What's no power here? steering, just very bumpy. Well, thanks for that. So I'd love to see a GSI. Okay, let's have a look at this. Um, so that's a tax disc from 2012. Marcos. Where are you, sir? Hmm. Tell us about your mark. Oh, lovely. I like uh, it. It's fast. It's fast. Oh, you're not the owner. Are you? <laughs> Hello. Is this your grandson, sir? Got a V8 X308 alongside it, XJ8. It's a 4 litre V8. Let's worry Marcos caps, let's move swiftly on. Marcos caps, because you look at Marcos. Tell us about this one. Uh, a Walsh car. XJS. Originally uh, made X350, in the aluminium body of XJ. Of Marcos. Another one here. His daughter's went to Renrell Art School. Frank Costin. 
his brother developed the Cosworth engine. So 1600E on the end of the row here. This is the executive, the upmarket version of the Mark IV Cortina. All looks super original. I've got a feeling I've had a look in this engine bay fairly recently. I remember commenting on the unsullied McPherson strut mountings. Often you see splodges of weld around there, but not on this car. Nice Tudor windscreen washer bag. Oh, it's a super original looking car. Mm, looks it. You can just tell all the original paint. It's nice to see it like that rather than too shiny. But the original paint applied in Dagenham, you can't replicate that really. Lovely straight six burble of a 240Z. Quite a few older motorcycles here as well. Uh, with this glorious, they've got a Royal Enfield, a modern build Royal Enfield, a matchless. And this amazing machine here is a Heinkel Tourist 175cc four stroke air cooled engine and four speed gearbox with electric start. That's quite an advanced machine. I don't see too many of these, see plenty of Lambrettas and Vespers and so on. But very few of these. That's very neat indeed. Okay, lots of Japanese bikes here, the oldish ones from the 1970s, a Kawasaki, got a modernish Harley. All sorts down here, a couple of Hondas, and a Valaset. I think this is a Venom, I think. If that is a Venom, that's a 500cc single. Lovely bike. There's also the Venom Clubman, they had a differently angled downpipe as I remember, the rev counter taco drive coming off the side casing there. I think this is a standard Venom, but I could be wrong. We've got here Yamaha, big Hondas, Honda Super Sports, Kawasaki, a few modern ones down there. I've just noticed that this uh, Morris Minor Traveller that we saw earlier on, it's actually ex-Army. There's a bit of useful information in the window here, so 1968 ex-Army Morris Minor 1000 Traveller delivered to CVD Ash Church in Gloucester, 3rd of the 4th, 69, left-hand drive form. Now it's right-hand drive. Described as car utility 4x2, left-hand drive and sent to the Ordnance Depot, Belgium, BAOR, British Army on the Rhine, 13th of May 1970. Came back to GB February 1977 and converted to right-hand drive by the army and demobbed in 1977. Originally registered on an S-plate in 77 and it got an age-related plate in 2008. Recent rebuild and respray to original green bronze military colour. What a great little car that is. I seem to remember there's one of these on display in the uh, RAF Museum at Cosford. They've got an army spec Morris Minor Traveller in there. Very appropriate map there for Wales, given that we are in sunny North Wales today. And talking of which, there is actually a little bit of sun peeking out. I almost dare not mention it, but there is. There is a hint of brightness in the air, which uh, is a bit of a surprise, given that we've had a fair bit of rain today on and off. Oh, that's a really bonny little car. There's a little rarity that turned up quite late to the party. It's a very early J Reg Mini Clubman Estate. It's quite a rare sight now. Looks super original inside. There's original vinyl covered seats, possibly recovered, but original style. Well, yeah, that's quite a rarity that. The old Clubman. I think these uh, hookups are unique to the Clubmans. If you're in any doubt as to what you're actually looking at, there we go. Yeah, that's a really bonny little car, quite a handy little machine. I learned to drive on a Mark II, or was it Mark I, 
Mini Estate, a little E-Reg car, 1967, so I'm guessing it was a Mark II. Still had the exterior door hinges and the little slidey windows and the doors. And this is obviously a fair bit later, different interior, longer front end. The idea, I think, was just to try and improve on accessibility compared to the original Mini. Uh, just a little bit more underbonnet space, so a little bit easier to work on. Oh, really nice. Just thought I'd have another quick look at this Reliant Sabre. Um, we've already had a look at the SE4 Coupe over the way there. And this is probably equally rare, if not rarer actually. Can't imagine they made too many of these. The SS1 was sort of the first of the line of these particular cars. And eventually they did do a turbocharged version, which must have been quite exciting. In fact, this is a turbo turbocharged version. How many of these were built, I'm not really sure, but the Sabre, I think, was like the run-out model for this particular era of Scimitar. Right, yeah, not sure I've ever seen one of those before. It's certainly a picturesque setting for a classic car show. Well, folks, I think that is pretty much our day at Bodrith and Hall in sunny North Wales, over and done with. Um, it's been interesting to pop over here, like I say, a show we haven't actually been to before, so that was all quite good. We've seen some cars we haven't seen before. We've seen a few regular faces, but like I say, a few cars we just haven't come across at any of the classic car shows that we've been to previously, which is always nice. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Please check out some of the other show videos and uh, museum visits and so on that are on the old Classic Car channel. And hopefully we'll have plenty more videos done before the end of the year. So thanks very much for watching. Bye for now. That's what you need if you've got a triple. Where do you put three pipes? Oh, yeah, plenty of chrome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mid 70s, chrome. Yeah, where do you go? Thank you for that. Yeah, thanks. Congratulations, sir. <laughs> so that's the Yamaha, which is.